to treat today is catering craft practices. And last week, we started with beverages. And today we are continuing with those beverages. Today we are going to treat nourishing beverages. We said that these, the, these are drinks with high food value that are rich in carbohydrates, fats, proteins. Examples, cocoa drink, egg drinks, milk drinks, and cereal drinks. I see the brackets, examples of cereal drinks, golden mom, complex, cereal, and so on and so forth. So, milk drink and egg beverages are very nourishing and ideal for invalid. Do we know who is invalid? The children and the nursing mothers. The invalid, those with sickness, coming from sickness. The children and the nursing mothers. As they are rich in, uh, they are rich in body building nutrients like milkshake with ice cream, orange milkshake, coffee and milkshake, coffee and cream, milkshake without ice cream, eggnog, we also have egg sleep, milk with the honey, etc. So all these things we just talked about, nourishing beverages. We said that these beverages nourishes the body the more. They nourish the body in the sense that when they are taken into the body, we will see them, the manifestation of them, they are positive in our body. That's why, we, that's why they classify beverages into three. That's nourishing beverages, refreshing beverages, and stimulating beverages. Now we have dealt with nourishing beverages. We have to note that coca, uh, uh, cocoa drink contains stimulating alkaloids, but in less amount than tea or coffee. It also contains a considerable amount of fats, some carbohydrates, protein, and a small amount of what? Minerals. Now let's talk about refreshing beverage. Why do we call it refreshing beverage? It refreshes our body. That's, we also call it task quenchers, task quenching drinks. Maybe when you are tired, maybe when you travel, you come back and you are very hungry, the food is not yet ready, you request for it. So you take it and cool down before the food is ready. So these uh, refreshing drinks, they include commercial carbonated drinks. Commercial carbonated drinks like Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, uh, Biggie, all these things you used to drink, they are all commercially made. We also have fruit juice, and drink fruit juice and fruit drinks. The fruit juice are prepared from fresh fruits such as orange, lemons, and so on. This fruit juice, we said that they are prepared raw, that's normal without any additives. That is why we call them fruit juice. We, we have fruit juice, we also have fruit drink. The fruit juice is one that is taken raw, natural, that is consumed in its natural state. Like when you squeeze an orange, example now, when you squeeze an orange, you, when you get an orange, you squeeze it and drink the water without any addition, additional or anything. But we call it fruit drink. When, after squeezing the orange, then you, you want to make it more, want it to be plenty. Then you add water and sugar, syrup, and other thing. It's no longer fruit juice, it is now fruit drink. So, have you noticed the difference between juice and the drink? So, most of these commercial carbonated drinks like Fanta, Coke, and all those things, and Sprite, they are fruit drink, not fruit juice. They are people that are drinks, not juice. Okay. So these are either served alone in the form of juice or mixed with water and sugar and served as what well, drink, as I said earlier. I've explained that, that when it is mixed, it is no longer juice. But when it is taken like that, the way it comes from its natural state, it is what well, juice. 
They can be made into concentrate of orange juice and what? Diluted to test. That is a uh, fruit drinks. They form a good source of vitamin C and sugar. The fruit drinks, which are made from uh, chemical powders and liquids, are sold commercially. They have no nutritive value other than dissolved sugar. What are we talking about? These things we normally buy inside the market, most of them that is not prepared, that are preserved with some things, they are no longer natural. They are somehow synthetic, artificial. Let's talk about the orange drink that I normally see. Most of them, okay, La Casera, and most of these drinks, they are just, most of them are flavors, chemical powder, they were dissolved and added sugar and sweetener, and we take them into the body. So they are called what? Uh, drinks, no longer juice. And we say that they have no uh, nutritive value, rather than what? Dissolved sugar. Is that understood? Let's continue in the next class. Okay. So we have dealt with uh, nourishing beverages. And let's talk about stimulating beverages. Why do we call this one stimulating beverages? Because they help to stimulate what? Appetite. They help to stimulate appetite. Maybe when you are sick, when you are feeling this is something, maybe you are not hungry, you lost appetite. So when you take some of these drinks, it helps to stimulate your appetite and make you to be hungry. Thereby, you eat in no distant time. So, these stimulating drinks, they are often referred to as what? Invalid drinks. Why do we call it invalid drinks? Because maybe when you are sick, as I said, you, are, that's, you, are, you lost your appetite, you don't want to eat. But when some of these beverages are given to you, maybe in the hospital or at home, then, and with some other medication, you know this time, you feel hungry. So they are often referred to as invalid drinks because of their medicinal properties. They are curative and help to stimulate appetite. Do you understand? Example, lemongrass tea. We talk about lemongrass tea, we know that we also, not only lemongrass tea, we also have a beef tea, and coffee, moringa tea, moringa that moringa leaf tea. So it's not written here. Yeah? So we have some of these tea. When we see them and drink them, they are curative, they are medicinal. They have some positive effects, some things they are placing in our body, and they help us to get well easier. Even without any other medicine. Yes, depends. Because they are medicine, they have some medicinal properties. Okay. So coffee and tea contain caffeine and alkaloid, which stimulate the central nervous system, CNS, in brackets. It lessens fatigue and the desire to sleep. This is the work of words, coffee and tea. Also, they contain some, vo some volatile oil, which gives the infusion, the characteristic flavor, and also contain tannin, which, when liberated in hot water, gives the characteristics of bitter taste. Am I understood? These are the things we normally see when we take tea, when we take a uh, coffee. I don't know if some of them have taken coffee before. Okay. Tannin also affects the digestion of protein by toughening the protein, protein food nutrients causing digestive word upset. You have to note, excessive intake, intake, especially that of coffee, may be harmful by overstimulating the central nervous system. That's why it's true that so many students or so many of us like to take coffee because when I can remember when I was in school, some say, hey, let me approach it, but I don't want to sleep. I'll take coffee this night so that I'll be able to, to read, to wait, like to boil the midnight oil, to read. But we are told that excessive intake of coffee is not good. They are harmful to the body because, you know, they know they stimulate the CNS, but they may overstimulate it, which thereby causing trouble in our body or system. So we should take care, in as much as we are taking coffee, we have to minimize the intake. That's what we are talking about. Tea is, tea is a mild and harmless stimulant. 
When sugar is added to it, it provides quick supply of energy to the body. You see, tea is different from that of tea. It's a mild uh, and uh, harmless stimulant to talk of that of coffee. Yes. So when you add uh, sugar, it provides a quick supply of energy to the body. Tea and coffee do not provide any nutritional food value to the body. But when sugar and milk is added, they provide energy and some nutrients. Is that understood? Yes. When you take the alone, like when you take just tea alone, like be the cocoa, the cocoa tea alone, and this beef, uh, the coffee, they say we well, they cannot give you what you need in the body, except when sugar and milk are added, they now combine together, they give you what you want. Okay, beef tea and lemongrass tea helps to stimulate the appetite and accurate Yes, the lemongrass tea I told you. So many of us, I would have come with some of the leaves of lemongrass tea. Maybe in our next class, I would like to show you lemongrass tea and the uh, uh, moringa tea. Moringa leaves. That moringa leaves, uh, you allow them, you see, put them in the jug and boil hot water and pour it in. After some hours, you begin to take it. It's a tea. As well, okay. They could be referred to as what well, sick people's drink. What we call sick people's drink, the stimulating beverages. Is that understood? So we have dealt with these beverages. Uh, after taking care of it, you see now we are going to talk about alcoholic beverages. The main concentrate of alcoholic drink is what alcohol. That is the main of what it contains. It is made up of. That is what it is made of. I have. It's what alcohol. It is quickly absorbed into the body without being changed in the process of digestion. When alcohol gets to the body, body tissue, it can be converted into fat. Yes. Some wines and liquors, example, beer, stout, and cedars, etc. Okay, as I said, that some wines and cedars, they contain some amount of sugar and may be a source of energy to the body. But that's not good energy, you know. Think about some of them who drink excessively, who drink themselves to stupor. You see, they will think they have energy, but at the end, that energy driven by that alcoholic, he take them somewhere else. Some may not get to their destination. Some may be fighting the trees or the gutters when they are going home. So you see that they have taken it, but it's not a good source of what? Energy. So the energy value of alcohol in beer, wine, and spirits are 7.0 calories, or 29 kg or J grams. Alcoholic beverages generally have little food there, value. Is that understood? So if you have anyone that is addicted by alcoholic beverages, please caution the person. Help me to tell the person that too much of everything is bad. So you know, as much as you are taking it, how to make it at work minimum. Okay. Now, selection of beverages. Before the beverages can be selected, or before one can say, okay, I can drink it, I can, this is what I, in fact, I am in love with this. Look at what you are going to put into consideration. Number one. The nutritional need of that individual. There are some individuals that may not even need it at all, but unknown to them, they were taking it. And instead of helping them at that moment, is killing them gradually, but they didn't know. So the nutritional need of that individual, there are some individuals that don't need to take it even at all. That's why if they go to the hospital, their physician or the doctor will tell them stay away from alcoholic drinks. Am I understood? Second one, the health condition of the individual. Yes. The health status. Are you healthy? You think you are healthy? How long or how often did you check yourself up to know? Do some check and balances in your body. Then the health condition of the individual need to be put into consideration before the selection of beverages the person will take. Whether alcoholic or non-alcoholic or minimal or you understand. So the health need to be put into consideration. Now, time of the day, yes. Time of the day matters a lot. Time of the day. So is it the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening? 
matters she have to think which one do I take which one like someone maybe in the hot afternoon like that very hot afternoon we decided I want to take tea that hot afternoon I had maybe it's some cold weather you begin to take cold so you have to think take uh, check the weather the time of the day before taking pain or even at midnight so you have to take then the weather condition of the place the weather condition of the place like some of us that are living in the tropical zones are uh, at times being deceived by following the people in the uh, uh, Jordan zones that is maybe they are, they, we are the Africans our most of our places are hot not like the other people so but at times we do join them so we have to come uh, Change the weather condition of the place where we are before you choose the type of drink you want to choose, either cold or hot. We are in the tropical region, all right, and the fitness zone, so we have to consider them. The type of work done by the individual are you a sedentary workers? Are you a manual workers? So the type of work you do determine the selection of your beverages. Uh -huh. So we have the types of Work, work people do. Okay, the sanitary workers are the work. Uh, sanitary workers are the work that are characterized by sitting down. In such areas, in such areas, which type of drink do you engage in? Okay, in the age of the individual. These are the things you need to put into consideration before selecting any beverages you take. Thank you. So, in summary, having done with. Uh, Nutritional values, nutritive value of, uh, of various beverages like uh, nourishing beverages, uh, refreshing beverages, and stimulating beverages. We have taken care to analyze them one after the other. I've also seen the examples of many of them, like that of the nourishing beverages. We talk about eggnog, egg flip, milkshake, and some of them. So these are the Drink that nourishes the body, that gives the body what they need whenever they are taken into the body. We also saw the refreshing beverages, which we say that they, they are commercially made, commercial carbonated drink that people take, that we also call them task quenchers. That's to quench your task. Maybe you are too thirsty, you are too, and the water is not available. Ah, please give me a bottle of coke. It's a task quencher, it quenches your task at that moment. And allow it to get where you drink or where to eat. We also see stimulating beverages. We call that one the invalid drink. Because, uh, yes, because they have some medicinal properties in them. Okay, so an example of them, we gave some examples like uh, moringa tea, green tea, beef tea, and lemongrass tea coffee, and so on and so forth. So these are the things we need to know when to take them and how to take them and considerable amount to take care of them in order not to drink ourselves to stupor. Okay, so these are the things we've talked about. We've talked about. And when we talk about alcoholic beverages, we now say that alcoholic beverages have little food value. So in taking them, we need to be cautious. We need to take, uh, be cautious. That's how we are taking it. And need to know how much the amount to be taken into the body and when to take them. We also saw the selection of beverages, how they are being selected. When you want to select the type of beverage you want to take, you have to think, first of all, the weather condition of the place you live, either in the hot weather or cold weather. Then, the nutritional need of that individual taking it. Do you need it? Did your body need it at that moment? Or have you taken it to the SS and you are told to stop, to put a pause in it? Maybe when next you continue. Also, the work done by the individual. If you're the type of person that is a, a sedentary worker, that the work uh, that is described by sitting down from morning to night to sit at a place like the seamstresses, uh, the, the typist, the, uh, the, 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 the cashiers in the bank. So most of these people, their works are characterized by sitting down. So you have to think the type of drink that is suitable at that moment. But if it is the uh, manual workers, those that do strenuous works, uh, so they know the type of drink to be taken to restore the lost energy in them during the day. 
then the age of the individual. Are you a youth? Are you an adult? Are you an adolescent? Are you a child? Are you the, are you an, uh, the aged parent? How you are going to select your beverages matters a lot. Thank you. Okay, number one, discuss the nutritive value of the following. Nourishing beverages, refreshing beverages, stimulating beverage with at least five examples of each. Two, differentiate between fruit juice and fruit drink. Three, list five factors to consider before selecting beverages. Thank you.